Catalina. Jeff Schmillian with us here on 365 Sports. Jeff, I've been looking forward to this interview specifically more than a lot of the ones. Wonderful. Because you are a pioneer in this business in, right. in sports radio with WFAN and the things that you've done, MS yes. and all that. Um, I am very curious, and you've got a book right. uh, out that we're here to, to talk about. Right. Um, I'm very curious on your thoughts on where this industry is going and yep. where it's headed uh, down the line because of there are so many changes. You know, yep. right now we're doing this. I was in terrestrial radio for almost 20 years. Now we're here yep. doing it YouTube, and it, yep. everything's changing. Right. How do you think the business moves forward successfully? Well, I think it does. And, and I, by the way, this is my first visit to Radio Row. Seriously? Seriously, first visit. Yeah. You know, we started this format in 1987. Uh, I marvel at how big it's gotten. Mm -hmm. um, I think, it, it. listen, there are a lot of challenges in the radio business. If you read the book, you'll find out a lot of them. Um, but as long as you matter to audiences, as long as you connect with people, there'll always be a place for it. So the, the things I think are, are kind of interesting is that most of the people in management came up from music, right? Right, right. And sports now is probably maybe talk and sports are a little bit more valuable than a lot of people realize, right? Yeah. Because you'll listen through commercials That's and right. music has, like, music radio, especially yeah. terrestrial, is struggling. I mean, because you've got Spotify and Apple Music That's and right. all these people. Right. So yeah. um, do you think that... Um, you see a sea change in the way that maybe leadership is, is more talk people in charge instead yeah, of Yeah, I think I think people realize that again, as your point, if you can if you can substitute music and not have to listen to fourteen commercials an hour, um, it, that's been a big problem for the industry. There's no doubt about that. That's led to a lot of the decline of the industry. But with sports and with talk, you have, you know, generally local content, content that matters to people. Um, and and it does have much more of an impact, no question. How do you feel about the media deals that are being made? We talk a lot about college football and college yep. sports on our channel. Yep. The media deals that are being made with the Big Ten yep. television and the Big 12 and the Pac-12 struggling right now to yep. get their deal done because yep. there's a lot of things, and you're on the West Coast, you know how it is. Yep. It's, um, what do you think about that and, and the changing landscape of college sports in the media? Well, one, it's funny. One of the things that I do, I've been on the board of trustees at USC for a long mm -hmm. time, and I happen to be involved in all the analysis of the Pac-12. The problem was, you know, from a USC standpoint, there are so many millions of more dollars available to a brand like USC to go to the Big Ten. I think the problem is, and whether it's good or bad, it's the way of the world. If you look at the NFL that gets $15 billion a year for television, and college football was getting about three, and yet college football is the second most important sport to the public, um, in college football probably in an economic on an economic basis should have gotten you know eight or nine or ten billion I think what's happening is you're coalescing around two big conferences the Big Ten and the SEC they'll be able to capture more of those dollars because they'll have so much more clout so we talk about realignment a lot it's yeah. a, a, another reason I, I didn't I yeah. was excited to talk to you because I the, the viewers of our channel voraciously eat it up yeah the U USC and UCLA delicious and came right out of the blue. For, right, right, and, right. But obviously that had something had to be in the works for. It wasn't like you call on Monday and then you're like, oh, sure, why not? It happened faster than you might think. Yeah. Okay. Um, when I got involved in it, I, I kidded and said, we have three choices. We can try to fix the Pac-12. We can make our own separate TV deal or we can go to another conference. Um, and I think we worked for a long time to try to fix the Pac-12, but it was so far behind. I think from an economic standpoint, it was hard, hard for the university not to move on. Well, and you're a university at USC that's kind of reclaiming your brand right, right. now with Lincoln yeah. Riley Absolutely and everything right. that's going on. Absolutely right. So um, you kind of have to you know, make those decisions, you know, get busy listening, get busy dying, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that how it is? That's it, exactly I know right. it's probably hard. It is leave. hard. And, and you look at it and you say, what's wrong with this picture? Mm -hmm. With NIL money and realignment and Texas and Oklahoma going one mm -hmm. way, USC and UCLA. But this is sort of the economics of the world. And that's the, the, the world we live in. Now, are, how excited are you, like, now that the, the you know, the nitty gritty is kind of done yeah. and it's down to the last year, how excited are you? to see those matchups and for USC 
in the Big Ten. Well, of course, I laugh because I live in Indianapolis. So my friends are saying, oh, you just got involved in it because you want SC to come to Bloomington and West Lafayette. (laughs) But but I I think it'll it'll, it'll be good for the university. There there are some complications, but it will give the university the resources and and, and the ability to be seen. You know, the problem with the Pac-12 network is it was in like 12 or 13 million homes. The Big Ten network's in 60, 65 million homes. So just the national visibility makes a big difference for a university. What do you think about the viability of the remaining members of the Pac-12 conference? I think they'll be viable. I think they're. I think you're going to see with the with the ACC and the Big 12 and the Pac-12, they'll be viable. It's going to be a second tier of economics, no doubt about that. But I think with the expanded playoffs, you'll have a chance to get in the playoffs. Um, and I think I think the problem is. It's kind of unfair that you have two tiers at the top, but that's sort of you know the way the world is. Do you, um, do you think? And I mentioned this on the show yesterday. Yeah. George Klyovkov going to SMU, right? Um, right down there, you know, we're in Waco, they're in Dallas. You yeah. know, kind of expanding that way out. Do you think that maybe the the Pac-12 is in a unique situation compared to the other Power Five conferences now that the SEC knows who they are, the right. Big Ten knows who they are, right. USC and UCLA are part of that. Right. The new Big Twelve knows yeah. who they are, right? And the Pac-12 has 10 schools, right. four of which are similar, two right. of which are similar, two of which are similar. Like yeah. Oregon State and Washington State are kind of in the same boat. Right. Oregon and Washington, same boat. Right. Cal, Stanford, different boat. Right. And then the four corner schools, different right. boat. Right. So they got to figure out who they are yeah. individually and then who they can be together. And, and I think there's probably other shoes to drop. If yeah. I had to bet, I'd bet the SEC ends up with 20 schools and the Big Ten ends up with 20 schools. And I think if I had to bet, I would say you may see Oregon and Washington and Stanford and Cal move to the Big Ten, and you may see Florida State and, and uh, Miami and Clemson and and, and, I, and North Carolina maybe in the SEC. I have no idea if that's right or not. If I had to guess, they'll go to 20. That'd yeah. be my guess. Yeah, and it just seems to be that way. So let's talk about, about the book. Okay. Um, you, have, you have had, I mean, we've talked about media and all that, but you've been an owner of the, uh, in Major League Baseball. Yeah. You, have, you have invested in many different things right. over your life, right. uh, which, is, which makes for a good book. It yeah. makes for a good thing. So let's, let's talk about the book. The book has been more fun than anything I've ever done. I did it at the behest of my 18-year-old daughter. I would drive her to school every day, and we just talk about life. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said, Dad, some, some, uh, you got to write it down. You got to write a book. Nobody would ever believe these stories. Mm-hmm. Um, they're funny and they're interesting. And so I just did it um, and I sent it to a few friends and they said, this is a really fun book. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then the next thing I knew, I had an agent and a publisher. My agent the other day said, what do you want to do for your next book? I said, I'm not doing any more books, this is one. <laughs> but it's been, I think the most, it just came out, but the response of people who've read it been incredibly gratifying. What's what's the, what's a, like a, just a little appetizer from the book you can give us, a good well, story? Well, people seem to want to know the David Letterman stories. Okay. David, David worked for us in the very beginning, yeah. first radio station I ever so ran. He's one of my personal heroes, as a yeah. matter of fact, yeah. And so somebody said, what was it like? And I said, well, I'll tell you a quick story. One day I came back from lunch, and David took the job, and he said, I'm going to go to Hollywood in one year, I'm gonna do this for a year. And I, and so, and, and he was, it was incredible because it was a talk station with a lot of older listeners. Mm-hmm. And you had a bunch of young people like us, Dave and I are the same age. In mm-hmm. those days we were very young, mm-hmm. 45 years ago. Um, and I came back from lunch one day and a guy said, Letterman's a communist. A listener, <laughs> and I said, well, why is he a communist? He said, well, I called in his show and I said, there are communists in Carmel, Indiana. And do you know what he said? I said, I don't know what he said. He said, well, you got to give them caramel because the football team's lousy and the traffic is bad. <laughs> and you can never find a parking space. So let's give the communists caramel and hold the line at the next suburb. <laughs> and that was Dave. I mean, and, and, and you dealt with, so you had a 25-year-old guy talking to basically 65-year-old people. One day he said, Indianapolis has sold the monument in the middle of town to Guam and in exchange, we're getting a 300-foot stick of celery. <laughs> and people called and said, you can't sell our monument. You can't do that. Um, and he said, yeah, it'll make downtown a lot greener. So yeah, every day was something like that. The, the beauty in Letterman yeah. was that he saw the, like, 
the most absurd, absurd random, you yeah. know. Um, I was telling somebody, one of our young interns about him, I said, you need to go back and watch this guy and yeah. how he did a talk show, yeah. like, and the way he entertained people, because if you have to do 300 shows a year like he's doing, yep. they're not all going to be green, so yep. he would do stuff like uh, walk out of the studio and ask people if he can taste their dinner. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it just, and I, I'll never forget, when he went to California, we sort of subsidized him and mm -hmm. paid him, and I'll never forget, he went to do the Rose Parade, and... Um, and he, he sent back a report and he said, look, they had a bu budget problem. They couldn't afford roses, so they just did pork rinds. <laughs> and he said, so all the floats were in pork rinds, but they didn't save any money because the stench of the rotting pork made so many people ill. <laughs> so on the other hand, the all pork Minnie Mouse was lovely. So but that was Dave. And, and I think, you know, just crazy stuff like that. I mean, the start of sports radio. I I have a favorite saying, the line between being a genius and an idiot is very fine, mm -hmm. and I'm on both sides. So the start of sports radio was, uh, one of the chapters is idiot to genius, started WFAN, it was a disaster, then it turned around, and then the next chapter was genius to idiot, where I bought the Mariners, I was the boy wonder, and then that didn't work, and I went from it, genius to idiot. So that's life. And I yeah. think the book talks about all those well, things. That's really awesome. Never ride a roller coaster upside down. Look, Jeff, as a person who's done this for a living for years, I like just an honor to talk to you and Thank someone you. who Thank pioneered you. Uh, you know, I'm you know, I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Like yeah. when people ask me what else I would do, like I, I don't I don't know. And it's because of Duffy WFAN in New York, or the ticket in Dallas that yeah. this kind of grew out, and you yeah. were a pioneer in that when there was like sports talk for one hour yep. wedged yep. in between things yep. at different, you know, 10.30 yep. p.m. Like I think about Frasier, yep. that sitcom, and the sports talk show right. was between yeah, a gardening yeah. show and yeah. the psychological yeah. show. Yeah. Like that's not how it is anymore, yeah. and that's because of people like you. So and I'm proud of it. We, thank we, you. All this all here, we are truly grateful for thank you. Thank people you. who saw it and saw the value. So please, and I, hope, I can't wait to read the book. I hope and if people want it, it's on Amazon, wherever you buy books, Barnes & Noble, whatever. But uh, I, hope, I think the thing that's gratifying is people read it and they, and they have fun. Jeff Schmulian, right here. Look, Sports Radio, David Letterman. But look, if you're a Rangers fan and, and you know, he wrecked the Mariners, so it's, yeah. you know, watching the show, you probably, probably think he's great too. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, love talking to you. This has been an honor. Thanks for coming on. This is Thanks. 365 Sports. Pizza, burgers, and Bears football. There's no place around Waco that serves them all other than 